Babel by R. F. Kuang. Robin, an orphan from India, is taken to London to train in the Tower of Babel, which is the British Empire's translation center. In this historical fantasy, the Tower of Babel is where the British Empire gets all of its power. Uh, the magic system involves these silver bars, and through the process of translation, this gives power to buildings and guns and all the things that make the British Empire work. Robin gets involved with studying at Oxford and translating at the Tower of Babel. The more he does, the more he realizes the evil that he is enabling the British Empire to spread its evil on the world. And this is when he runs into the Hermes Society, which is an extremely secretive organization whose mission it is to take down the Tower of Babel and therefore the British Empire with it. This book is written by a woman who majored in Chinese studies in Cambridge and Oxford and is currently going for a PhD at Yale in linguistics. After reading this book, it's obvious that she put all these things into good use. The book is dense with linguistic references and she uses it very effectively in creating characters and establishing the scene, in general building the world. And it's impressive because she doesn't get too deep into the linguistic aspect of things to lose the ordinary reader. She keeps a good balance of it. I would say the same thing about the historical facts around the British Empire, but this is where she starts to lose me a bit. I feel like this book was written by someone who has a serious axe to grind against Victorian Britain, as if it were the incarnation of evil and it was spreading its poison all over the world. History isn't black and white, and in this case it isn't just all black. Um, history is very gray, there's lots of components to it. I can overlook that a bit in this book because I think the point that this book is getting at is if you had an extremely evil empire, what would be the limits of what you could do to act against it? Is violence against it justified? Do you have to have a violent revolution in order for change to happen or are nonviolent options a better course? So you have to have the pitch black evil instead of the balanced historical perspective. Even so, I think she leans pretty hard into vilifying the British Empire through the dialogue of the characters, through the description and the narrative, and especially in the footnotes where she seems to outright state her opinion, which I think is going too far. I thought it comes across as overly preachy, and I would have toned that back a bit. My other complaint is the magic system. The silver bars that have power if their words are translated correctly, it kind of makes sense if I don't think about it too specifically, um, but it runs into problems, I think, as the book reaches its end because certain elements of it depend on these, the magical nature of these silver bars. So it didn't quite make sense to me the way that things turned out in the end. But my complaints aside, this is a very well thought out, well crafted book. There are lots of surprises throughout and they keep you wanting to turn the page. Now the thing about surprises in books, you can get away with doing a lot of surprises if you set up your world properly because then the surprises have credibility and they feel real. Uh, and that's the case in this book. She does such a good job at creating the world and creating the characters that you go along with the surprises and you're, they're genuinely very surprising. So I was delighted to read this book uh, from beginning to end. I thought it was very gripping, very engaging. I'm going to give it four and a half stars.